Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 28, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Sundvolden, Norway. It can be quite difficult to identify when a particular system was infected, in particular if you're dealing with more sophisticated malware. Didier, however, recently looked at an interesting example of HWARM. Now, this malware is certainly not sophisticated, so it doesn't really try to hide the date of infection very well. In this particular case, it even adds a registry key with the date of infection and then communicates that date back to the attacker. Of course, before trusting any registry key like this, you have to make sure that the malware is not putting a fake date in here. Now, in this case, you could verify this by reverse engineering the malware, figuring out what it actually does with this registry key. We always tell our users and hopefully practice ourselves not to open random files that we receive. However, in many file browsers, you will see a preview, a thumbnail image of various file types displayed without really having to click on anything. And of course, this thumbnail is usually rendered using actual vulnerable software like various PDF browsers or for HTML web browsers. So to protect users, the popular Unix desktop environment GNOME came up with Bubble Wrap, which is essentially a sandbox that's being used to render any thumbnails. Great feature, but if you're using the latest version of Ubuntu or SendOS, it's actually turned off. According to the Ubuntu security lead, one reason they turned it off was that they just didn't have the time to audit the code and they're afraid to actually introducing more vulnerabilities by allowing an unproven security feature like bubble wrap to be included in their distribution. Not really sure what to make of it. There doesn't appear to be sort of an easy on off switch for this feature. One of the problems I often run into is that people do disable security features because well, they can be bypassed. But what you usually have to decide is, is a certain security feature worth the pain, the performance hit, or whatever the drawback is of using a particular security feature, not whether it is absolutely perfect, which no security feature is. And for a better or worse, if you have teenage kids, you probably have heard of the game Fortnite, which recently was released on Android. Now, if you need yet another reason not to install this game, it actually comes with a pretty interesting vulnerability. The game is installed using an installer that you download from the Google Play Store. And then this installer downloads the actual APK file from Epic, the company behind Fortnite. However, it saves this APK to external storage on Android and then installs it just checking the file name. Problem here, external storage is shared other processes may write files by that name and even overwrite the authentic download from Epic. So in short, this vulnerability could be used to install arbitrary software on your Android phone. Little side note on this vulnerability, it was apparently first discovered by Google. Google notified Epic. Epic is working on a fix, but Google did release details about this vulnerability before a fix was released in line with Google's sometimes controversial vulnerability release policy. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. And in case you like this podcast, uh, don't be shy and recommend it to others or leave a good review on iTunes or whatever site you're using to download this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.